my god. Oh my god guys, welcome to another video in which we're going to be talking about how to write an effective two column proof in geometry. So guys, we're going to be doing this problem we see here on the back and without further ado, let's begin. So guys, the first thing we have to remember when writing a two column proof is first, what is it used for, right? So a two column proof is basically, as its name suggests, two columns of statements and reasonings that we're going to use to go from what information that is given to us to a conclusion. To write an effective two-column proof, which we use a lot in geometry, we're going to follow this procedure. So the first thing we have to keep in mind, guys, is that we're going to number each step. Ironically, that is the most important thing. We're going to number each step, one, two, three, four, and also the reasonings, right? So each explanation to this statement is also going to have a number. We're going to start with the given information, right? So if you are given information or a diagram and you can make conclusions out of the diagram because you were given, then you are going to state that and the reasoning is going to be because it's given. After that, you're going to write the statements with the same reason that can be combined into one step. So that means if you have two vertical angles on one side and then same or other two vertical angles on the other side, because you are using the same piece of information, vertical angles, you can actually write these statements that have the same reason in just one step. The other thing that you can do is that you can draw a picture or mark it with the given information. So if you guys are given diagrams, you can make your own diagrams, or you can use the one that you're given in order to keep track of the steps of the procedure that you're following. And last but not least, you must have a reason for every statement, right? So this is very, very important. Now that we know that, let's try tackling this problem here. This is the problem that we're going to be doing or working on today. So the first thing is that we're going to see the given. So the given information is that the ray BD, which is this one right here, is going to bisect the angle CBE, okay? So we have to remember that the definition of bisecting an angle is that this angle is actually going to be similar to this one, okay? But the first thing we have to see is that the ray BD bisects the angle. So that is going to be our first statement. And when we write down the reasoning, it's going to be given. Now, because we know that this angle and this angle are going to be um, congruent because they are going to be bisected, the angle CBE, we are going to write down that the angle CBD is actually congruent with angle EBD, and it is because of the definitions of angle bisector, which you have to remember from eighth grade. Now, another thing is that you have the angle um, ABC, and you have the angle FBE, which are these two, which I'm gonna put two tick marks on. And you basically know that they are the same, because of the vertical angles theorem. So because they are on opposite sides of the same vertex, you know that they are going to be congruent. Now, you know that the measurement of angle ABD and the measurement of the angle FBD are going to be equal to the sum of the next two angles, right? So this angle right here, right, is going to have a measurement and then this one is going to have another measurement, right? Why? because the angle addition postulate that we learned last time. Now, we know that the measurement of angle ABD is equal to the measurement of angle FBE plus the measurement of the angle EBD. Now, guys, if you need to pause the video, go ahead and do so. We're actually, we actually know that because we're substituting the values, right? So we know that the angle ABD is the same as the angle FBE plus the angle EBD, right? So what we're doing is that we have ABD and we're gonna equal it to FBE and EBD because we're substituting, right? So we're substituting the values because they are, again, um, congruent. Now we know that because of that, the angle ABD, which is this long angle, is going to be congruent or is going to be equal first, the measurements are going to be equal to the angle FBD because of the transition property of equality. And now that we know that the measurements are equal, 
we can conclude that the angles are going to be congruent, which is what we wanted to prove, right? So we wanted to prove that those two angles were congruent because of the definition of congruent angles. And that is pretty much it for today, guys. So feel free to pause the video, rewatch if you need to, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye, guys. Check out these other videos to improve your math skills and make sure you click that subscribe button to make the community grow. Follow Omath God in its social media accounts, drop a like, a comment below, and see you on the next one. Bye!